Researchers at Microsoft say they hope the creation of a new chip will be a major breakthrough for computer technology. The hope is that this new processor could be the first big step in bringing quantum computing into everyday life. But some people in the scientific community, not so convinced. For more on why this could be revolutionary, tech analyst Carmi Levy joins us from London, Ontario. Good morning to you. Good morning, Lindsay. Great to be with you. Okay, so why is this chip such a big deal and how do you pronounce it? Well, uh, it's pronounced Majorana or Majorana 1, and uh, it's a big deal because it really is the next big thing in computing. Quantum computing has been kind of out there for years, this kind of holy grail of technology, but it isn't something that we can buy just yet. It isn't something that you and I can walk into a big box store and bring home with us. Uh, and so this announcement moves it a little bit closer to us. It brings it in from the horizon. It makes it a little less theoretical, a little more possible. Let's take a step back back. What is quantum computing? So when you use a, a computer, a laptop, a tablet, whatever device, a smart device, a computing device that you use today, it's what's known as a classical computer. So basically what it does, it, it crunches data in bits, so ze either zeros or ones. It's binary. It can only be a zero or a one. And for the most part, that works well. It does things fairly quickly. But you know, when we want it to do something more, for example, crunch a, a weather model or uh, invent a new drug, that can can often take uh, hours, days, months, even years of processing power. So what quantum does is instead of it just being binary zeros and ones, it crunches data that can either be a zero or a one or both at the same time, which essentially means it's almost like nuclear power. It's infinitely more powerful, mm -hmm. infinitely more capable than any computer we've ever used now. So things that we might have in the past waited for hours, weeks, days, or months to process, in, in many cases, they can happen within a blink, which as you can imagine, has huge implications for the way we use technology. Well, let's talk about that. What kinds of problems could this kind of processor help solve? Pretty much anything. So if you can imagine uh, medical researchers looking to, to solve new diseases, uh, uh, that can, in fact, allow them to run multiple models at the same time, get their answers a lot faster. Um, uh, it can create better batteries, better battery formulations, chemistries, and things like that, so they'll hold a charge longer, last longer, be safer. Uh, cybersecurity, it can make us a lot safer by simply using quantum computing processes uh, to keep the bad guys out and sort of slam the doors in their faces. Uh, you know, better better weather models. And this is huge because the more data you can crunch, the better you can predict what's coming, not just a day ahead, but days or even weeks ahead. Uh, financial modeling and economic policy setting. Imagine if our governments had this technology, they could figure out, you know, precisely where the economy is going. How will the tariffs that are coming in from the U.S., how will that affect us on a day-to-day -day basis? Your computers could give you those answers very quickly. Um, it can design better uh, engines, motors, more efficient, more powerful. It can reduce the drag on an airframe so that your planes can be more efficient, make supersonic flight, bring the Concorde back maybe, uh, allow that technology to happen, get you to work faster, so better traffic flow by using modeling that would otherwise take a huge amount of computing power. And the probably the biggest one is artificial intelligence. It's it's art, AI and quantum are kind of like two peas in, the, in a pod. AI requires massive computing resources, quantum computing will make that possible. Whoa, my mind is like, <sighs> okay, so why are some scientists skeptical? Um, you know, because we've heard this before, and so many times this revolutionary technology comes along, uh, and it's there, there's massive promise, but it takes years, if not decades, for that to happen. And quantum doesn't come without its challenges. First of all, if, for example, for cybersecurity, it can help us be safer in the hands of cyber criminals, it can also make us less safe. There's also a fundamental problem with the way the technology works. It's inherently noisy, and Microsoft says that it's addressed this, um, but the way quantum computers work with the way the chips work mm. is in some cases they're not as precise as they need to be. They make mistakes uh, and the technology mm. needs to be improved there. And, and the final one here is Microsoft. They're not shipping chips yet. They're just showing an architecture that they need to scale up over time. So it's not here yet. Uh, we still can't buy this stuff. And Microsoft's announcement moves it closer, right. but we still can't touch it. Dot, dot, dot. Carmen Levy, thanks for breaking that all down. It really is fascinating. Thanks. It's coming awesome. Up thanks so much, Lindsay. Coming up after if you like that video, make sure to subscribe to the Your Morning YouTube feed, where you can find all kinds of new content posted every weekday morning.